Hello, in our series going through the first three chapters of Genesis, we've reached that point at the beginning of chapter two, when God has finished his work of creation and is now establishing the day of rest. So I need to read from chapter two and the verses two and three. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. The, and God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. One of the trick questions you often get in a biblical question questionnaire is how many days did it take God to create the heavens and the earth? And typically somebody might say seven. But of course the biblical narrative tells us six days God created the heavens and the earth and on the seventh he rested. And what is happening there is the seventh or Sabbath day is being eradicated from the text. And of course, ignoring the day of rest is endemic in Western culture as well. People have tried different patterns of work and rest, not just the six days of work and the seventh rest. People have also tried other patterns of taking a greater number of work days and fewer rest days. And these have largely failed. Well, the Genesis pattern of work and rest is taken up in the Ten Commandments in Exodus. And there we have it prescribed that as God worked for six days and rested on the seventh, so should we. When we get to the early church, all the early converts to faith in Christ were Jews, and they already had established in their cultural and religious traditions this cycle of six days work and a Sabbath rest, a stopping day, from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. But it wasn't long before the Christian church expanded into the Gentile world, the Roman world and the Greek world, and people began to believe in Jesus who didn't have that Jewish background and culture. And of course in the Roman world it might be there's a different day of rest, or indeed if you're of the slave class you had no days of rest at all. So when church gatherings met for a supposedly Sabbath day, it was not easy to gather together. Indeed, by the New Testament, we find that that Sabbath is no longer called the Sabbath, but the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day recalling the day of Christ's resurrection, but still that pattern is retained. Six days work, a seventh rest, where you are able to do so. And of course, in the Roman world, that wasn't always possible. The word Sabbath means stopping. And it doesn't mean that we just become inactive, inert, do absolutely nothing. What it means is that we have a stopping day, which contrasts with the work day. And you might think of this as breaking down into a major part of one's week and a minor part of one's week. Let me give you an example. If by profession I was a landscape gardener, then on my stopping day, I would not engage in gardening, maybe. If, however, say I was a teacher, I might on my stopping day get involved in some gardening because that would be a leisurely stopping activity for me. Now, a common stopping time enables Christians to meet together for worship and fellowship and teaching. But it's not just a stopping day. The Sabbath means holy unto the Lord, says the text in Exodus. Now, holy, H-O-L-Y, means distinctive or set apart. Now, every day is God's, but to take one day as distinctive, give it a distinctive hue, is as understanding and establishing what God set out in the Ten Commandments. But we must be careful here because Jesus criticised the whole idea of reducing the Sabbath, or the stopping day, to merely a whole list of rules and regulations. And he made the point, didn't he, that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So we have this God-given gift, a pattern, a prescription, a privilege of stopping once a week, and we must not neglect it. But nor should we reduce it to legalistic, joyless straitjacketing. Let it be a day of joyful gratitude and celebration holy unto the Lord, set apart and distinctive for him. That's what the text of Genesis gives, and that's what is taken up in the Ten Commandments and also 
in the New Testament. Now, a point of reflection. As you think about your stopping day, as it is holy unto the Lord, is it joyful and celebratory? Would you and your family benefit from rethinking what this day would look like for you? Well, thank you for listening to this, the latest talk in Genesis, the first three chapters.